Hello everyone, my name is Kirill and you are on the Auto Advisor channel. Today we'll talk about how you could kill a turbo engine. We live in the era of the so-called turbocharged engines. And by that I mean that almost all new cars are produced with a relatively small engine displacement, let's say from 1.2 to 2 liters. And all these engines are equipped with turbo in order to increase their power. So the turbo is a very important part of the engine and we must understand how it works to know how to operate it correctly. Did you know that the turbo is a popular term? While in a railway, this device is called turbocharger since it literally consists of two impellers. The first is a turbine and the second is a compressor. And when we connect these two, we get a turbocharger. First impeller is called a turbine and it works from the energy of the exhaust gases. It means that exhaust gases blow on the fan and it rotates. But I hope you know this is very simplified. This turbine is connected to a compressor and the latter, as it rotates, sucks air from the atmosphere and supplies the engine cylinders. The more air is delivered to the engine, the more oxygen is there which means more fuel can be added and more power generated. So between the engines with the same displacement, the more powerful one is the engine with the turbine. Okay, why do I explain all of this to you? There is already a detailed video on our channel about how turbo engine works. The link is going to be below. When operating the turbo, take into account that the turbine wheel is designed for a certain exhaust gas's speed. If this speed is not reached, then the turbo does not work. It can be demonstrated when you hit the gas pedal, you don't feel that boost immediately. The engine just revs up and after a certain engine speed, for example 3000 revolutions per minute, the turbo turns on and your car gets more power. The time between hitting the gas and feeling the boost is called lag. That means we just don't have that amount of power. There are actually multiple ways to fight this turbo lag. The one way to solve this problem is by using two turbos instead of one. A little turbo that spools up quickly to tide you over until another larger turbo has time to spool up. This method alleviates turbo lag and provides a much smoother power gain. The second way is to install low-speed so-called mechanical compressor, which doesn't run on exhaust gases, but directly from the energy of the engine using a belt, and at high speeds install the classical turbo. And third way to fight turbo lag is by using the variable geometry turbine. This is done with the use of adjustable vanes located inside the turbine. But we have a video about that on our channel too. So moving on. And let's dive a little bit deeper into how a turbo really works. The thing is, is the turbine housings direct the gas flow through the turbine section. And the turbine itself can spin at speeds of up to 250,000 per minute. Therefore, the majority of turbocharger rotors are supported not with your usual ball bearings, but with the floating ring bearing, which can be treated as two fluid film bearings in series. It consists of a shaft and two rings with fluid or lubricant between them, which is oil. Due to fluid pressure, two elements always stay apart and don't come in contact. And here it is, the key ingredient you should know about, oil. The turbine side constantly has blazing exhaust gases passing through it, making it literally burn red hot. This extreme heat also passes to the bearing and to the oil in it, then oil burns and solidifies. When solid particles mix with the oil, they will be pulled in the load zone of the bearing. The high pressures and loads will drive the particles into the races, causing pitting and excessive wear of the bearing which eventually will affect the shaft, its balance and seal. Then oil will start to leak into your exhaust system 
and, and as this burns off, it produces a distinctive blue-gray smoke, which also leads to excessive oil consumption. At the end, bearings and maybe even turbo altogether are totally messed up and needed to be repaired or replaced, which is really expensive. So, the question, how do we overheat turbocharger? There are some ways. Working the engine too hard before it has had time to warm up, or, more commonly, turning the engine off without letting the turbo slow down and cool off after extended journeys. So don't just go leaving the turbo overheated, which causes burning of oil and corrosion of the turbocharger bearings. After finishing driving, allow the engine to idle for about 1-3 to three minutes. But now, in new cars, there are ways to cool the turbo after the engine is shut down. To be specific, there is an electric pump circulating engine coolant through the turbocharger center section for up to 15 minutes after the engine stops turning. So what I wanted to say is that if you have an old car, you need to be aware to not to overheat your turbo. But even if you have a new one, I would still let it to idle for a couple of minutes. The second very important cause of turbo failure is poor quality oil. We already discussed that turbochargers work by using the kinetic energy of the hot exhaust gases and operate at incredibly high speeds of up to 200,000 revolutions per minute, which generates incredible heat on its own. Oil must withstand the high temperatures and not carbonize. Or, if you don't change oil and it gradually becomes contaminated, resulting in excessive bearing and turbo wear. Turbo is a great invention, which allows to get more power from a relatively small engine, but it's very high maintenance. Choose only the right type of oil, don't forget to change it, and never ever overheat your turbo. Well, I hope it was helpful. Once again, my name is Kirill, and you are watching Auto Advisor channel.